Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about a topic near and dear to many people's hearts, which is hair loss through the perimenopause and menopause transition. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you may also have noticed that I just got my hair cut, so it's a perfect time to talk all things hair. First, I wanna start with the two most common diagnoses and the differences between them. So the first is called telogen effluvum. This is actually when you lose more than 150 hairs a day. You might say, how the heck do I know if I'm losing that much? Well, it's normal to lose around 100 hairs a day, and so greater than 150 is considered just an overall shedding pattern. So I want you to think of it more as, instead of counting out the number of hairs, just an overall feeling of just a thinness to your overall hair. One way you might know this is you might notice that it used to take you three or four times to loop your ponytail around and now it's taking you five or six. Or it used to take one or two and now it's taking three or four. That's a good sign that you might have this pattern of hair loss. Now the second is a female pattern of androgenic alopecia. And what that means is hair loss in specific areas, specifically the temporal area or along the top frontal part. So if you are telling your doctor, I've lost hair and you're all of a sudden turning your head down like that, you might have androgenic alopecia. Now, why is it important to know the difference? Well, there are different treatments based on which type of hair loss that you have. And next I'm gonna go over what labs your doctor should check for you because that could help overall figure out which diagnoses you might have. Now, before we get into lab work, I really wanna talk about what are the different etiologies or reasons for hair loss. Now at menopause, one of the biggest ones is hormonal changes. So estrogen is really good for hair. And as we lose our estrogen, that can be one big reason why we have hair loss in general. The next is actually genetic. And 90% of hair loss is really genetically driven. So you can thank mom and dad for giving you those genes. Sorry to say. The next is environmental factors. I don't wanna to spend too much time on this, but just know that certain types of chemicals are what you might be exposed to. And I'm gonna put stress, like life stressors in this environmental category because that can definitely also lead to more hair loss. Certainly other chronic conditions and medications used for those chronic conditions can also be really big culprits. So for example, some medications can cause hair loss that you might not even known about. Like for example, some medications to treat hypertension and even medications that can help with heartburn like omeprazole, those can also cause hair loss and hair thinning. So one thing I would start with is just going over your medication list. As for more reasons, some is idiopathic, meaning there's just no good reason, we just don't really have it nailed down. And then lastly is nutritional deficiencies, and that's what we're gonna get into next. It's one reason you might wanna check labs just to make sure you're not missing any crucial vitamins and supplements. Lab work, okay, definitely start with zinc, iron, ferritin, biotin, and total iron binding capacity, or TIBC for short. These are really what I consider to be low hanging fruit. So let's say for example, you are deficient in zinc or iron. That means that there may be a way that you can supplement with some over the counters that can naturally boost your ability to regrow a lot of your hair. So checking those first is really crucial. You might wanna also check sex hormones. So low estrogen can be a cause or a culprit. If you are already postmenopausal, you know that your estrogen is low. And I did a really good video here here on understanding your labs if you want more of a deep dive on that. But if you have an IUD, if you've had a hysterectomy and you don't have periods for some reason, an estrogen level can not only be a reason you're losing hair, but can also help to diagnose you with menopause or perimenopause. And so if you also want to check that, I would check an FSH or follicle stimulating hormone so that you can pair those two numbers together to see where you are potentially in the perimenopause to menopause transition. Another lab that you should check is testosterone because because if that's high, that can be a reason for hair loss. So I see this very commonly in my menopause clinic when women are on pellet injections and super therapeutic testosterone levels. Or alternatively, if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, you can also have high levels of testosterone. And that too can be a reason that you're having that androgenic hair loss. Androgen's a precursor to testosterone, and there you have it. Now, autoimmune conditions can be another big reason why you're having hair loss. So celiac one is big. Also hyper or hyperthyroidism, so checking those antibodies. And pernicious anemia is another one that you could have a doctor check a whole autoimmune 
panel to see if you don't have one of those, especially if you do have other symptoms to go along with it. All right, let's talk over-the-counter options, things that you can start doing right now that I would recommend doing. The first is adding biotin into your regimen, and if you're low in any of those supplements like zinc or iron, you're definitely gonna wanna add those back into your daily regimens. Now, a really popular option is Nutrafol. I hear a lot about this. My patients ask me about it. This video is not sponsored by them, but my patients have told me it is helpful. When I look at what's in those, I do see a lot of those vitamins, your zincs, your irons, your biotins. So I think that is the crucial ingredient that's really helping it. But there are other ways and other vitamins that you can do, but biotin is going to be something you definitely want to start. Another treatment for that androgenic alopecia is ketoconazole shampoo, and that's gonna block conversions to testosterone, and so that can be particularly helpful. You can get 1% over-the-counter, you can get 2% as a prescription, but I would really start with just over-the-counter ketoconazole shampoo as a great starting place. And lastly, you have your Rogaine foam. Now, you have to really stick with this one. You have to use it consistently for six months. It's really exhausting to do, and you're not gonna see results for a really long time, but it's another really good option. Now, the minoxidil, which is in the Rogaine, is really good for hair, and you can also get it in a prescription orally, and those are both options, but we're getting into the prescriptions next. Lastly, before we get into prescriptions, something really, really important is to not put stress or tension on your hair. So that means avoiding headbands, ponytails, or even clips, because anytime you're putting tension or stress on the hair, especially with the type of hair loss that's mostly shedding, that can be just a huge step back. Also, try not to overbrush your hair or overwash your hair, because those things can all lead to a lot of shedding. All right, on to prescriptions. So menopausal hormone therapy or estrogen can be really good for hair. Now it is not an FDA indication for hormone therapy. So you might say, what the heck does that mean? Well, the four indications for hormone therapy is hot flashes, night sweats, osteopenia, or vaginal dryness. But I'm sure you maybe have one of those. Estrogen can be really good for hair, but like all things for hair regrowth, it does take a really long time, anywhere from the six to nine, even up to 12 months to see a notable difference in your hair. If you're like, oh, I'm really interested in hormone therapy for the use of hair growth, check out this deep dive here because I talk all about how to get started on menopausal hormone therapy. Now, spironolactone and aldactone are another medication option. This medication blocks, again, androgen, so it is better for that androgenic alopecia. It is a daily oral medication that can slightly lower your blood pressure. So you do wanna talk to your doctor about starting something like this. It can also help to block cystic acne, so it's often used for patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome to help with facial hair, acne, and can also be good for hair in general. Like all my videos, this is not direct medical advice, and all of this is for education purposes to arm you with ideas to talk to your doctor about. Another option is finasteride. I'm not gonna get too deep into this because personally, I don't use it very often. It's a medication used to treat prostate cancer but can help with hair. And again, that oral minoxidil, that's another option. It's one that I don't prescribe as frequently as the first two, but just for completeness sake, there you have it. To round this video out and to be complete, if you are having significant hair loss as well, you can see a dermatologist and they can do things like RPR and hair transplants, of which I certainly cannot do and is outside my scope because that is into the world of dermatology. I'm sure you can find lots of YouTube videos on those, but those also exist. And finally, there are things that you might get ads for, like lasers or all of those things. And all I would say about those is, look, they are really costly. I'm not really sure how effective they are, and so proceed with caution. All right, guys, I hope you found this video really, really informative. I love talking about hair and at Midi Health, where I work as the Chief Medical Innovation Officer. We teach all of our clinicians exactly these steps so that you can get help and support for hair loss, which is so common and so frustrating through the perimenopause transition. If you're interested specifically in hormone therapy and you wanna get help directly from me, I do have a course. The link's in the description below. You get weekly lives with me and a whole course to get you started and how to talk to your own doctor, which is another option if you're not in one of the states 
where MIDI is available or you specifically want to work with me, which who could blame you. I hope you guys love this video. If you heard a little bit of banging or my dog barking, there's a lot of construction going on in my house. I hope you enjoyed the new painting behind me. I just painted my bookshelves the same week I got my hair cut. So lots of changes, but I can't wait to see you guys next week for a brand new video. Thank you for watching and please subscribe if you haven't done so. I'll see you later. Bye.